Hey guys, welcome back to the Freedom Homestead Kitchen. I'm Tangie and today we are canning deer meat. I had some of this beautiful venison in our deep freeze and I took it out yesterday, I let it thaw, and so now I'm just cutting it into stew sized pieces. Um, this is just gonna make it a little bit easier to get into the jars. I have jars baking in the oven. Now this is uh, one way that you can sterilize your jars <clears throat> and save your pots if you're like me you only have a few pots and you don't want to have them all on the stove. So instead of boiling my jars to sterilize, I actually put them in the oven and they're baking at 175 to sterilize. Okay, so if you are new to canning, I've got a video that I'll share with you where I go into a little bit more depth about prepping and getting your canner ready and all that good stuff. Um, so we're just gonna move on from here. First, I'm going to fill my jars. I'm using wide mouth pint-sized jars and um, I'm doing what is called raw packing, which basically means that I'm not cooking the meat before I can it. Um, and the reason for that is because it's gonna cook in the pressure canner, and I'm also not going to add liquid. Now you can if it gives you the warm and fuzzy feeling. I have canned deer meat without adding any liquid, and there was enough broth that it covered the meat. So you do whatever makes you feel comfortable. So here again, I have my venison that has been cut into cubes. It's also been uh, cut of any uh, sinew or silver skin that has, was left on it. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our meat and we're going to pack the jars just like this. And you're going to leave about an inch of head space. And you see I'm just kind of sticking my fingers down in there, really trying to pack this good and tight. And what's gonna happen is when it starts to pressurize and it starts to cook, it's actually gonna shrink down the broth is going to move up. So there we go. I've got about an inch of head space and I'm going to go ahead and fill up the rest of the jars before I add any seasonings. And we'll talk about seasonings here in just a moment. Okay, so I had just enough uh, deer meat to fill seven pint sized jars and that's okay. Um, so before I get into what I'm gonna do with the rest of the jars, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that I'm gonna go ahead and season these and I'm just using pickling salt. You can use kosher salt or you don't have to use any salt at all. Uh, salt has nothing to do with uh, canning this. It's just adding flavor before I can it. So I'm gonna use half a teaspoon per jar. Okay, and again, this is another optional step. I'm gonna add just a sprinkle of black pepper to each jar. Okay guys, so I've got my meat in the jars, but like I said, I didn't have enough to fill up the canner. So you could just put seven jars in the canner if you wanted to, but I'm gonna fill mine up since I'm already using the time and the electricity anyway. So pints of beans need the same amount of processing time as meat. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the rest of my jars and just go ahead and can some great northern beans. Um, if you don't have any beans that you wanna can, you could also can water. Um, you can actually sterilize and have canned jars of water in case of an emergency. So that's another option. Okay, so I just have a clean cloth with some white vinegar and I'm just running the, uh, I'm just wiping off the lids just to make sure there's no debris or anything that's gonna prevent from having a good seal. And I've got my lids right here in hot water. It's not boiling, but almost boiling. You can see I've got lots of little bubbles down in there. Um, so now it's time to add the lids.
now that my canner is loaded, I'm going to get this going. Uh, we are under a thousand feet uh, elevation, so I can with 10 pounds. So again, you can refer back to my bean canning video to get all the ins and outs of how this works. Um, but basically, I'm going to bring this to a steaming boil. When a steam starts coming out of this valve and it steams for 10 minutes, then I add my weight. Uh, when I add the weight, then uh, the pressure will start to build up and this valve back here will pop up. When that pops up, the pressure really starts to build. And then when my gauge reads about 10 pounds, uh, this will start to rock back and forth and I will time it for 75 minutes. Since I'm canning pint-sized jars, I can for 75 minutes. If they were quart-sized jars, I would can for 90 minutes. So now we're just gonna wait for this to start steaming. Okay, so I still have about 35 minutes left on the canning, but I just made a delicious meal using some of the Fiesta beans that you guys saw me can the other day. Um, this is a leftover makeover, so I will be sharing this recipe with you guys uh, in another video. Um, but I also wanted to do a quick, say a quick hello. I posted a picture uh, and shared it on Instagram and Facebook of me doing the whole canning thing. Um, so I want to say hello to Kelly, Daisha, Jennifer, and Stacy. We've all been um, talking back and forth on, uh, on my Facebook photo. So I just wanted to say hi, ladies. Okay, so I've already removed the uh, pressure regulator and it's been off for probably about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this by twisting it, opening it away from my face. Gorgeous. own broth in there. Not only is it awesome to can meat because you don't have to worry about anything going bad if the electricity goes out um, like you would if it was in the freezer, but the fact that you can pop a top, stick it in a pan, and five minutes after it's warmed up, you've got a meal. Uh, you can serve that with mashed potatoes as is. Um, I like to drain the juice off of it and put some barbecue sauce in it. And I mean like five minutes, you've got barbecue sandwiches for your family and it's delicious. Um, also before my husband has actually just taken a can of meat to work and has, has eaten it right out of the jar. Because this stuff normally takes forever to cook, but it's already cooked and it's uh, pantry stable. Okay, so that is 16 more pints of food that I've been able to put up for my family. Um, I didn't get 20 pints in there just because I used wide mouth, wide mouth jars. They're already starting to pop. So uh, yeah, so I've got seven pints of canned venison and then the rest I did in, uh, in Great Northern Beans. So this is awesome. I'm so glad that you guys are finding this helpful. This is definitely exciting and fun to do. It's really awesome that you can uh, stock your cabinet shelves in no time just by putting up your own food. If you guys have any questions about any of this that I've done today, please let me know. That's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. <laughs> Until next time.